Hi there. This is the normal speed of our story about Neil Harbison, a cyborg, okay? Be sure to listen all the way to the end because I am going to talk about the word cyborg and introduce some new vocabulary. All right, enjoy. We see with our eyes and hear with our ears. At least that's the conventional way to do things. But no one is calling Neil Harbison conventional. Neil is colorblind. Unlike many colorblind people who are unable to see just a few colors like red or blue, Neil can't see any colors except for gray. He spent his whole life experiencing the world as only different shades of gray. That is, until recently. Neil now has the ability to see using his ears. He has implanted an antenna into his skull. It's not attached to a headband or a hat. The antenna is attached directly to the back of his skull at one end, bends over the top of his head, and has a light sensor on the other end. This light sensor records the colors and sends this information to a chip embedded in his skull. The chip translates these colors into a sound. And this allows Neil to experience each color as its own unique sound. The red of a traffic light translates into one tone, while the green of a tree translates into a different tone. In this way, he has created a sound vocabulary for all the colors we see with our eyes. Neil's translation of color into sound has become so deep that it also works in reverse. When he hears sounds, they translate into colors for him. When a telephone rings or a glass breaks, he experiences these sounds as color. As an artist, this blending of sight and sound has allowed him to create unique works of art. Neil is a trained musician, and he creates sound portraits by translating the colors and paintings and photos into sounds. He also is a painter and has painted all kinds of sounds, including human voices. He once painted a speech by Martin Luther King and another by Hitler. The definition of a cyborg is someone who is part human and part machine. Neil embraces his cyborg identity fully. He says, I don't feel like I'm using technology or wearing technology. I feel like I am technology. I don't think of my antenna as a device. It's a body part. Some people believe that humans have stopped evolving, but perhaps people like Neil are on the cutting edge of a new type of evolution. Okay, so Neil Harbison was a cyborg. Cyborg is a word that comes from the term cybernetic organism. Cybernetic organism, cyborg. And this cyber prefix Actually, you'll see that in front of many words, and basically it means related to technology, related to computers, and especially the internet. Um, other words that have similar meanings are virtual, like in virtual reality, uh, the prefix e, as in email or ebook, or the prefix i, as in iPod or iPad or iPhone. Okay, so those are similar prefixes. And some words that use this prefix cyber are words like cyber cafe, a place where you can go, you can have a drink, and you can surf the internet. And when you're surfing the internet, you are in cyberspace, that non-physical world that exists in our minds and on the internet. And you have to be careful because you could fall victim to a cybercrime, such as having your identity stolen, having your computer hacked, or maybe you receive a virus from a cyber criminal. So be careful out there. Um, and all of that world has many different people interacting on it. That creates a cyber culture. And actually, cyber culture gave rise to a genre, a type of literature and movies where stories that exist in the future, they take place in the future, where it's a high-tech world and there's some kind of disorder 
social disorder involved and you see artificial intelligence and cyborgs, a good example might be Blade Runner, uh, the movie with Harrison Ford, or the future world that exists in the Terminator series, and uh, or, or the books that are by William Gibson. Uh, Neuromancer is probably the best, the best known of those. So anyway, this can cause some people a lot of fear and they suffer from cyberphobia, right? An irrational fear of computers and the internet. But back to cyborg, okay? Cybernetic organism. An organism is a living thing. And of course, cybernetic, actually this, this prefix cyber in cybernetic, it doesn't refer to the internet as much as it refers to technology. And basically cybernetics is the study of how people or living things can control and communicate information. And very importantly, with some kind of feedback loop, okay? So a cyborg is actually a living thing, an organism that is integrated with technology in a way that there is a feedback loop that helps them to have enhanced or better abilities or maybe to recover lost abilities. Let me give you a simple example. If you have heart problems, your doctor might give you a pacemaker and implant that inside your chest. And that pacemaker will measure the electric signals coming from your beating heart. It will process those signals and then deliver an electric stimulus that is based on the information it received. And that keeps you alive. And that's the feedback mechanism. And we see this in Neil Harbison as well. He could only see the world in gray. So he implanted an antenna in the back of his skull and he had a light sensor in the front and that created a feedback loop that allowed him to hear colors and it allowed him to see sound. Isn't that amazing? So that really enhanced his ability to create certain types of art that maybe other artists didn't have access to. Okay, so that's Neil Harbison, the artist cyborg. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you want more of them, visit us at deepenglish.com.